I survived 800 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. This is the finale of the Better Minecraft series, and in these final 100 days, we complete more projects than we ever have before. As always, if you don't know what Better Minecraft is, it's a mod pack that adds tons of features to Minecraft while still staying really similar to the original game. In the last 100 days, we obtained the best armor in the mod pack, built an armory, and encountered a lot of cool things along the way. In these final 100 days, we complete the secret underground base, make huge upgrades to the animal sanctuary, and build a special room to end off the series. This has been a crazy journey so far, and I'm so excited to return to the series for one last time. It's not the end of our adventures though, because after this series, there will be so many new adventures to go on. Other than that, as always, grab your favorite snacks, relax, and enjoy everyone as I try to survive 800 days in Better Minecraft Hardcore. Starting out on day 701, I was very happy to be back in the Better Minecraft world. Oh man, I am so happy to be back in this world. Before I do anything, I'd just like to get a recap of everything that we have. So obviously we have our main house with our Chilu called Jeffrey and Suki's up here. And the dragons, the dragons, they are looking really, really nice with the shaders currently. And on the topic of dragons, in the last episode, I asked all of you for name suggestions questions and the most liked comment was by Aloy who suggested three names actually. Echo, Gaia, or Minthi. Since it was left to my personal choice, I really liked the name Minthi and that's what I chose. Apparently within Greek mythology, she was a nymph that lived by the underworld river Cocytus and she was turned into the mint plant by Persephone. So that's a really cool backstory. Welcome Minthi to our dragon army. Now that our new dragon was named, I had to do some cleanup around our base. You see, I hadn't been on the world for a while, and there were a few updates that occurred since my last login. I checked up on the storage room, and while there were a few chests missing for some reason, overall, it looked pretty good. My aquarium was good, but when I approached the animal sanctuary, things weren't so simple. Oop, um, that's, uh, this is not good. Well then, um, okay. Yep, that happened. Um, not sure what... Yeah, yeah, that was gonna need some fixing. My warehouse structures seem to be fine and same with my automatic brewer. And when I checked on the bird sanctuary, yeah, we, we had some issues. More specifically, random holes in the ceiling. The underground base seemed in good shape, fortunately, and now that I had done a checkup on everything, it was time to get to maintenance duty. I began by focusing my efforts towards fixing the bird sanctuary. It required me to use jungle and dark wood slabs, both of which I luckily had. While working on this, the first night of these 100 days approached, and it was time to sleep. On day 702, I finished making my way around the sanctuary, and with that, the birds sanctuary was back in good shape. Next, I got to fixing up the animal sanctuary. There was a lot of damage done here and the animals were running rampant. First, I filled in the acacia fencing, then I progressed to the spruce for the snow biome, and finally the aspen fencing for the desert biome, during which I saw a moose that had escaped. Once I fixed all the fencing, I worked on bringing all the animals back to their homes, and there were quite a lot that had ran off. The next night approached, so I slept off the night, and upon awakening to the next day, I brought in the last missing animals to the sanctuary. I fixed up the chests in the storage room, and then I decided to finally clear out this abandoned house next to my base, because while it was the first place I stayed at in the beginning of the series, it was time to remove it and to clean up the area. And after that was done, I came to find that my bridge had somehow been torn up. I'm not sure if there's some natural disaster that occurs and, and some fire event that breaks all of my wood, but this was becoming strange. Anyway, Anyways, all I could do was fix it up, and now that I was actually done with all of my repairs, I could now get started working on my other projects. Given that this is the final chapter of the series, I wanted to work on finishing my existing projects like the underground base and animal sanctuary. The first thing I wanted to do was work on improving the garden that I had made before. While the trees and plants on the inside were beautiful, I felt like it needed a design built around it. I started by adding an outline of stripped birch logs, which I thought would fit well because it was a very 
very neutral color and wouldn't take away from the varieties of colors from the trees. And once I finished with filling in the logs, I started adding glass to the inner layer of the garden. I figured that making a glass cube design around the garden would be an interesting design, so that's what I ended up doing. But I ran out of glass, so I went down to the smeltery room and smelted up some sand that I had. While I waited for that to smelt, I decided I would work on the underground base. I ended up spending the rest of the day trying to fix up the secret door system we had because the levers wouldn't work sometimes. I got it to work pretty well, so I left it. Then on the next day, I moved past the redstone and quickly removed the random cactus farm I had because I actually built a full cactus farm later. And I began working on the entry section of the underground base. I came to the idea of using colored terracotta to replace the walls. And this way I could basically remake the cave into a multicolored cave while still keeping the stone texture of blocks. I would need to mine terracotta to continue with that, but I needed to be around my base for the glass to smelt. So I ended up finishing the crystal drop in part of my base for the time being. I then had the idea to put some type of a liquid at the drop in and I found this stuff called Areno, which is found in the abyss. So I decided I would collect it later. Finally, my glass was smelted up. So I got to finishing the garden. Some trees were sticking out, but I had no problem with just skimming them off a little bit. They still looked fine. And then I ran out of glass again. So again, I collected sand and there was a blood moon happening while I was doing that, which I ended up disabling later on because blood moons are so annoying. Anyways, I finished up the glass and the garden was looking pretty cool. However, I did still want to design the cube and make it look more aesthetic. I started by adding stripped birch logs to the corners. Then I covered the roof with birch slabs. I had to chop down birch wood to restock on supplies and finish the roof on the next day. The roof ended up looking flat. So to fix that, I made the outside layer of the roof have solid blocks and that looked a lot better. I figured I also needed to add some lighting on the inside of the garden. So on the next day, I looked into the different light sources available in the mod pack and I found these wicker lanterns. They required swamp reeds to be made and I remember that they could be found in swamps, which I luckily had right next to my base. Sure enough, I found swamp reeds and was able to make a lantern. Let's see what this looks like. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, this is kind of cool. I think it's quite interesting. I do like this, so I want to make more. I set out to collect more swamp reeds. There weren't really any more near my base, so I used a waste stone and flew around. I got attacked by an alligator once I got to a swamp, which at this point was no match for my gear, and I was able to collect all of the swamp reeds that I needed. I also ended up finding this creature in the water. Look at that. That's cool. What is this? Whoa, look at this. Ow. Why do you have to do this, pal? Okay. Alligator in name only. Encounter an alligator snapping turtle. I'd like to read about this. Hold on. While reading about these turtles, I found out that the moss that grows on them can be sheared to make a special turtle shell that gives you knockback resistance and lets you breathe underwater for longer. I now had a bit more than a stack of swamp reeds, but before returning home, I encountered this pink structure, which I had faced in the past. I figured this was a great chance to get more totems of undying and test my gear out, but I did forget just how dangerous this building is. Woo. It's like some ultra evoker or something. Oh boy. Oh, this is no joke. I could die here quite easily. The carrot is regenerating me pretty well. This is really not good. I think I killed the ultra evoker guy. Wow, that's intense. That is extremely intense. Look at that. Oh man, okay. You know what? I've had enough of that. <laughs> I got my butt out of there and soon ran into a friendly local. Hi, Tony. Tony the Armorer. Hello, Tony the Armorer. It's nice to meet you, my friend. You got a nice little home here. He's got some kids. Aw, Brenna and Odell. Oh, wow, Sherry, three kids. Busy man, Tony, busy man. By the end of the day, I returned home using my waystone and realized that I also needed something to put the lanterns onto. There were many options, including rope, which I tested out and it indeed placed onto the ceiling, but was way too thick. So I ended up settling on making these thalassium chains because they had a unique color, but were also neutral. On the next day, I traveled into the end to first repair all of my gear. And then I headed to the outer dimension to collect the ore I needed. Soon enough, I found it. And while in search, I found more cool things. I found this drim rock, which had a really cool dark vibe to it. Null stone, which was really clean. I found 
this ender ore and then ran into this, which ended up being called oddity cactus. I also found out you could use it to craft white dye. I made my way through this scary biome and found these really cool ender lily pads. This is so cool. Look at these. Oh, can I not take them? Wow, this place looks really, really cool. It's like sea bamboo and lotus stem. A bit creepy almost, I'd say, but are these eggs? I'm not quite sure. What is this? Wet manger sponge. Whoa, it's a new type of sponge. I then ran into this really creepy cactus. Whoa, whoa, look at this. This is freaky. Like, this is actually freaking me out. I don't like the sight of this. Seriously. Right next to that, I found this weird structure that had a very strange monster guarding it. I made my way through the structure and there were a lot more of these guys. Luckily, my gear held up well. I found a chest and checked around it to make sure it wasn't trapped and it had some decent loot, mainly consisting of useful ores, which I snagged right up. There wasn't anything else to the structure, so I headed out and continued my search and found this end temple. Under temple. Would you look at that? Should I just say whatever and jump down there? I'm strongly considering it, to be honest. Oh. Look at them. Look at this secret TNT. I knew it. Clever. They thought they're clever, but they're not. There's a secret chest down here. How does it feel to be outclassed? Huh? How does that feel? Not good, huh? I just broke that chest by accident. <gasps> okay. Well, it looks like I've been outclassed. I cannot believe... <laughs> I thought I broke all the TNT. How did that even happen? Yep. I, I, I deserve that. The chests didn't have much in them anyways, so I headed out and continued collecting thalasium. I saw these volcanic mountains and made my way inside one, which did damage to me, Pro probably because there was also a jellyfish in there or something, so I instantly got out. I flew through this interesting biome, which I think I've been to before, and in here I found an end city, which had a really cool added design to it, including teal blocks that went really well with the purple. I got some shulker boxes and got out, after which I instantly found a bunch of thalassium right next to me. It seems that this biome especially had good spawn rates for it because I found a lot. I was now ready to head home and decided to make a waystone. Do I have purple dye? Oh, I need one more purple dye. Flower? No. The purple dye. Silk coral. Sage. Oh yeah, twisted umbrella moss. Umbrella. Oh, there we go. Purple dye. And then waystone. Thank goodness. All right. And Eleanor. Oh, I'm very happy to be back home. Waking up to the morning of day 714, I was excited to get back to work on the base. I smelted up the thalassium ore, but unfortunately, there was a bug that didn't allow me to transfer the thalassium ingots into nuggets. I couldn't even make shovels in the normal way to then smelt them down into nuggets. So I ended up just having to make a bunch of boots, which cost me a lot of ingots. And ultimately, I could barely make any thalassium. So I ended up deciding to mostly use regular chains. I made my way around the greenhouse, placing the lanterns and also added some glowing plants that I had. And I landed on a fairly evenly lit design. I lit up the top of the roof with some torches and with that the garden was complete there were also little butterflies flying around it which was really cute now i was running out of fireworks so i spent a couple of days afking at the mob farm for gunpowder and then harvested my sugarcane farm for paper however i only got four stacks of sugarcane for my harvest and i definitely needed more in the long run so i decided i would expand my sugarcane farm and doing so required me to move our beloved cat Lucy's grave, which I didn't want to do, but I figured I could take the flowers I planted for her, name them Lucy, and then embed them in my storage room. On the next day, I spent time filling in the area of expansion so that the sugarcane farm wouldn't just be floating. Then I got to work building the land for the sugarcane to grow on. I poured in the water, built up the walls, and followed the same pattern that I had set before. I worked on this through the night of day 719 into day 720. I then finally filled in the roof and started filling in the sides of the build, but I ran out of glowstone, so I had to head into the nether. I was able to find glowstone pretty quickly, actually, and it was a lot easier to collect than I thought it would be. I returned home in the nighttime and arose on the next day to complete building the structure of the sugarcane farm. Unfortunately, I then started having issues with filling in the water, but what's worse, 
worse is I didn't correctly account for how many blocks wide I needed the structure to be. So I ended up tormenting myself with trying to fix things over the next few days. And I ended up finding a fix by extending out the walls beside the water on the sides by one. And finally, I figured things out by day 727. Now I wouldn't have any issues with making fireworks. Now that I was done with that, I set out to find a mesa biome so that I could collect terracotta for my base and start working on the multicolored cave. Fortunately, it didn't take me that long. And by day 728, I found not a mesa biome necessarily, but a good enough chunk of terracotta, which I happily mined up. I only got half an inventory full given that I didn't want to go overboard with the terracotta yet. And next I needed to make the dyes I wanted so I could make different colors of terracotta. And I found that the purple terracotta looked very similar to magenta bricks. I still wanted to make magenta terracotta as well. And it required blue dye, pink dye, and red dye, which I didn't have. So what I did is go to my greenhouse and bone meal some beetroot because in this pack you can craft it into red dye, which was perfect. With that, I made a sample amount of magenta terracotta and found out that it was similar but different from the purple variation and they looked really nice alongside each other. Given that I also used turquoise bricks in my base, I wanted to find terracotta that could match that color. The blue terracotta looked more like purple and there weren't any other options other than light blue, which looked like violet. I decided that I would still use all four of these variants because they fit quite well into the color palette my base had. I made a bunch of the color terracotta and got to work. I started by removing the quartz in the entryway and started replacing it with the terracotta. At first I made a one-toned wall, but then I came to the idea of mixing the different colors with each other, which was very interesting. I had to spend some time farming beetroot for red dye, and on the next day I got back to working on the entryway. I found that mixing purple and magenta and then blue and light blue made for great gradients in the build. And throughout these next few days, I worked on building out the entryway all the way down to the main base. I had to remove the glass tunnel that I had made before and replace the pathway fully with terracotta. By day 734, I was done. All of this part of the cave is done. It's looking really interesting. I do want to figure out the flooring now because this is definitely not the most preferable. I didn't like how the oak looked in combination with the colors I used though, so I removed it and I tried using birch planks instead. I also tested out stone bricks and I landed on birch wood being my favorite. So I finished up with replacing everything and now I could roam around my finished entryway. Next, I wanted to work on my crystal tunnel entrance. I remembered that I wanted to find that arena liquid I found out about earlier so that I could complete it. So I headed into the abyss and immediately I did not want to be there. I ran into a plant that made me blind and then I finally found the arena liquid. I hesitantly jumped into it and I instantly found out that it sets you on fire. But given that I have an amulet that gives me permanent fire resistance, I was completely fine. And this could serve as a repellent from intruders for my base. Now, when I returned, I had the thought that I wanted to get more crystals to finish off the entrance. So I headed to my enderman farm first to repair all of my armor and elytra and then I went on a search. I saw these crystals which are very beautiful but they weren't the ones I needed. I then found this biome. Whoa, whoa, look at this. This is a very interesting biome right here. Wow. That looks crazy. Look at this. What is this? Umbralit. Make tiles with it. This is a very, very unique looking block. It's scary. This looks like uh, like an alien planet. I found a dungeon and quickly looted it, but beside it, I found this strange area. There were these creepy Verlimian skulk tendrils all over the place, and it was just, it was really strange. On day 736, I decided to fly onto one of these stars that I'd always flew past, and I found out that it was made out of this translucent block called Emerald Ice. And I really liked it, and I would have collected more if it was faster to break. Then something unexpected happened. Whoa. What just happened? Explore all end biomes. Oh, I found every end biome. Oh, this is like a mushroom island end biome. Oh man, I think this is like one of the rare biomes because I've never seen this before and I've traveled a lot in the end. Cool. Wait, hold on. Amaranita cap. Interesting. I'll mark down the coordinates for sure because this uh, this is a rare biome. Does Shears let me take this? <gasps> let me take the mushrooms. I collected some more blocks from the biome and one of those was mossy obsidian. I also came across this geode 
that looked like amethyst, but it was a teal variant. I tried to get the crystals, but they didn't drop and I couldn't break the blocks themselves. If anyone knows what this is, please let me know. I flew through this extremely cool slimy tree biome. I absolutely loved the blocks here. And by the end of the day, I decided I would return home. I figured that instead of spending more days looking for crystals, I could use terracotta for the bottom of the crystal tunnel instead. I got attacked by this disgusting centipede, which I, I, I just, I, I can't. And then I got to work on filling in the bottom. I made my way around the tunnel, randomly filling it in with a variety of colors I had. Soon enough, I finished building out the cave system and touched up the drop-in section by adding more variety around the ground. Then I placed a layer of dirt to pour the arena liquid onto, and I was done. I tested out falling into the arena pool, but unfortunately, I found out that it doesn't negate fall damage, which was kind of a bummer since I wanted this to be a landing area for the base, but I knew I wouldn't die of fall damage anyways, so I could deal with it. That, however, gave me an idea. I could make this a secret entrance as well. I covered up the opening with Arena, and that way you couldn't even see there was somewhere to go from the drop-in section. Since the liquid sets you on fire, I figured it would also be a good idea to add a flow of water behind the Arena, since that way I could cool off after flying through the fire. The next project I wanted to finish up was my smeltery. I had the idea to essentially rebuild a cave around it using terracotta blocks. The first thing I did was finish up the frame glass on the sides, and once I was done with that, it was time to start recreating this cave. And so it began, my mission of turning all the regular stone into a colorful masterpiece. After rebuilding the attached wall, I started building an outline for how I would shape the rest of the cave section. And while doing so, I found an old friend. Oh, it's Garnet. Hi, Garnet. Oh my goodness, Garnet. We got to get you to a better spot than this. <laughs> Oh, I'm happy to see Garnet. Later on, I decided I would build a room for my turtles. Anyways, I continued my work building an outline. I also found Toric while doing this, which was pretty funny. I finished the cave outline, and now it was time to build it all up. Other than getting attacked by the occasional zombie, this process went pretty smoothly. I also decided to leave in some moss around the area because it added to the cave aesthetic and contrasted fairly well with the colors I was using. By day 741, I finished the build, and it was looking really good. Next, I wanted to figure figure out the lighting for the caving system because I had just been using torches. I ended up finding out that there were these ender torches and soul torches, both of which fit into our color palette perfectly. I was easily able to make a stack of ender torches, tested them out, and they were perfect. They emitted as much light as regular torches and fit the purple aesthetic. I also tested out the soul torches, but unfortunately they did not light up the area around them. So I decided I would just stick with the ender torches and made my way around the cave place them down. I also lit up the smeltery, and with that done, the foundation of my underground base was looking very good. Now that the foundation of the base was complete, I wanted to work on building our turtles a room. I first needed space to make that happen, so I began extending out the tunnel system. I ended up having to clear my way through some terrain, and then continued on with my tunnel design, placing oak stairs, logs, and turquoise bricks. I had to take a break to chop down some wood, and then I got back to work. I came to the idea that I wanted to create a main lobby area and then have branches come out of there. I built out the tunnel a little bit further and then began working on the lobby area. I kept with the theme of the base being a cave system, so I used terracotta, and by the next day I was pretty much done. The only thing that came to mind was adding another light source around the area. I found these rose-colored lamps and they ended up fitting really well. I added these around the rest of the base, and then I had the idea to add a map to the lobby section that would hopefully show the underground. I used my trusty sugarcane farm to farm crop for paper and make a map, but I accidentally ended up making a present. This was really sweet because it lets you wrap a present and dedicate it to someone. As a thanks to my Patreon supporters, I decided I would make an individual present for each with different colors and place them in a room later on. So thank you to Adrian Daugherty, Nixonix33, Mountain Dew24, Aaron, Norman Haynes, Corbin Bebo, Federica Delamore, and What the Dog Doing? I also make something special for all of you guys at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Upon activating the map underground, I found that unfortunately it does not create an underground map. I wasn't bothered though, and I created more pathways. I ended up taking a quick detour to repair all of my gear because I was paranoid of breaking anything. Getting back to it, 
I spent some time thinking of what I was going to do for the turtle room. To get inspiration for the build, I went around visiting each of our turtles, hoping to get some ideas. The two themes I noticed were gems and an earthy tone. I paved out the entrance to the room and then got attacked by another one of these centipedes. I had enough so i decided to light up the caving system and literally remove them from the mod pack because they were really nasty i did not enjoy seeing them i got an idea for the design of the turtle room which would require normal terracotta so i collected that up essentially i wanted to make a mud room using the different variants of terracotta like shingles and bricks i figured this would fit well with the rest of the base and also fit the earthy look of all the turtles i placed some crystals down and some mint lamps as well which fit very nicely with the brown of the terracotta the crystals i ended up removing however since they didn't really feel like they fit well. I then grabbed some cave roots to bring the turtles to the room since nothing else could move them and as you could imagine this was a, a very very slow process. I needed to break out three wide holes for Torek to be able to fit through. I was able to do that and slowly but surely we made it. I then worked on transporting Garnet. Oh no no Garnet. I did not mean to hit you Garnet. Here, Garnet, I'm so sorry. Take a bunch of cave roots. Luckily, Garnet didn't stay mad at me, and I finished transporting her. With that, I just had to bring over Tsuki. No, 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 no. You don't want to go down there, trust me. Tsuki, stop. <laughs> Tsuki's trying to die or something. I don't know what's going on. Tsuki was the most difficult turtle to get to the base since she was above ground at first, but slowly I was able to carry Tsuki through the base and into the special room. From your comments, I also learned about something that I wanted to test out. I have heard that mining might work. Oh, it does. Look at that. There we go. Mine off all the oars. Now with all the turtles in the room, it felt like it was still missing something. And I decided to add some oars around the place. And that's going to be our room. I had to go back through the base and fix up all the carnage that was left behind from me transporting the turtles. And after that was done, I wanted to make a room dedicated to my Patreon supporters. And again, I do end up making something for all of my viewers later on, and it's pretty cool. I had the idea to make the room out of ore blocks, almost like a vault. So I mined some ores for a bit, mainly iron, since I didn't have a lot. And once I collected and smelted that up, I got all of my blocks of ore into my inventory and started working on the vault. I had to be very careful with how I placed these because I didn't want anything to be out of vision and go to waste. My work continued into day 754 and once I was done with the room it was time to place the presents inside. I placed each of them in randomly and I think the room turned out pretty nice. With that I was happy with the work I had done on our underground base and I blocked up the next tunnel to be continued. The next project that I wanted to work on was the animal sanctuary to make it the creation that I always wanted it to be. As I was planning that out this happened. How did the monkeys get out? Oh my god, they're climbing the fences. No, no, no. They can climb fences. Oh my god, he just took my sword. He just took my sword. This monkey just took my sword. And now this one took my sword. Okay. My goodness. Look, I'm all about protecting animals, but when they start plotting against me, it's game over. No regrets. Now, the monkey is stealing my sword did remind me of the fact that I threw out the overpowered sword of abyss I got on the last 100 days because I accidentally killed Ladder with it. And in my YouTube community tab, I promised you guys I would get it back since a lot of you guys were commenting asking why I threw it away. So, that's what I plan to do. But... To do that, I would need to summon the final boss, Nightblade, again. And to do that, I needed to make an Eye of Abyss. This required loot drops from each of the bosses in the Abyss Dimension. I did have the Roka Horn, so that would speed things up, but I still had to defeat an Elder and Crystal Golem. So I headed into the Abyss and began my journey. I turned on my minimap for the search, and after a bit of flying around, I actually managed to find the Elder, and using my fortified gear, was able to take it out fairly quickly. Now I just needed to find the crystal golem, which could be found in the slime forest biome. While searching, I got blinded again, which wasn't very assuring, but a little bit of time passed and I found the crystal golem. I went all in, guns ablazing, but I did start taking more damage than I thought I would have. Eventually, I was able to chunk its health down and defeat it to get the crystal hand. And after that, I headed to an altar where I could summon the boss, but it didn't work. You see, I completely forgot you needed to light up the surrounding pillars with soul hearts to summon the boss. To get those, I needed to defeat some soul guards, so I went out on a search and I quickly was attacked by soul guards who I easily took down 
and they dropped two soul hearts each. I was also curious as to what would happen if I attacked one of these large whale things and nothing. N nothing happened, but it did have a lot of health, so I just, I just felt bad for killing an innocent creature, if anything. Anyways, I returned to the altar, and this time lit it up using soul hearts. After which, with the golden apple eaten and enchanted golden carrots ready, I summoned Nightblade. I'm scared, I'm not gonna lie. Oh boy. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Where's the boss? There. There's Nightblade. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm eating an enchanted golden carrot. This is a good use. Okay. I have no idea what's going on right now. Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna chug away at my golden apples. That's what I'm gonna do. My gear is taking severe damage too. And so the fight went. This was not easy at all. Nightblade was a relentless boss, chasing me down, summoning me into the air, and confusing me with his clones. On top of that, my gear was breaking at a fast rate. I started getting attacked by two Nightblade variants at one point, and my health was tanking fast. But in the end, I was finally able to isolate Nightblade and take him down, giving me the Sword of Abyss. I headed back for home, but as I was looking for the portal, I started taking damage because fear had built up to high in this dimension. I was at risk of dying, so I had to eat golden apples, but fortunately, through the darkness, I was able to find my portal home. I made use of the Sword of Abyss, which lets you dash around, and I do something really cool with the sword later on, but for now, I decided I would place it into the trophy room, which seemed to have a couple of trophies removed from the update, but that was fine. After all of the damage that had been done to my gear, I went to the Enderman farm to repair it up. Once I had everything back to its full durability, I returned turned home to begin work on the animal sanctuary. After literally thinking about this for the rest of the day, I had the idea that I would build walls around the sanctuary correlating to the biome. The first biome I wanted to do was the nether, and for that, I wanted to get nether bricks, so I started smelting up netherrack. While that was smelting up, I started figuring out what materials I would need for the rest of the biomes. For the desert biome, I wanted to use sandstone, so I headed to a desert with a waystone. This desert was different from the normal type. It was from the atmospheric mod. The sand from this biome could be used to create sandstone that looked a little different. I decided I would just get all of the variants of sand so that in case I needed it, I would have different options. I also found this wood while collecting sand called Yuga wood, so I collected some of it up. After getting a good amount of this arid sand, I decided I would leave and get some regular sand. I was able to find a normal desert and I wanted to find sandstone directly, so I mined downwards. Now, while I didn't find any sandstone, I did come to find a good strategy for farming sand. The torch strategy wasn't especially the greatest, but mining out sand at its bottom was very efficient because it kept refreshing. I was able to get stacks and stacks of sand from this, and I kept to my strategy. By the end of the night, I was fulfilled on sand, and now wanted to find snow for the snowy portion of the sanctuary. I repaired my shovel before doing anything else, and then had it out on a search. I found a snowy mountain biome, but it didn't have any diggable snow, so I had to fly past it. While flying, I saw a collection of blocks that were unfamiliar. After looking into it, I found out that it was red rock. I figured this could potentially be useful for my desert biome, so I spent some time collecting this up. After I got an inventory full of it, I continued my search for snow, and I ran into this interesting tree, which was called a sunny blossom tree. Close by, I also found an orange blossom tree, so I took a sapling from there. And while flying, I also saw a ship, and for old time's sake, I decided to plunder and loot it. In the beginning, these skeletons could bully me, but that that was no longer the case. I looted the barrels, which gave me a good amount of gunpowder, and I headed out. I found this interesting looking rock, which I dug inside to see if I could find anything, and nope, there was, there was nothing there. After that, I found this huge structure, and I've been to one of these before, but this time I had an elytra and could easily fly around. I made my way through, breaking the spawners and looting the chests, which had a lot of ores, actually. The moms had a lot of health, but my gear was strong enough to let me battle through, and I came out with a lot of loot. I continued my adventures into the next day, and I found a ruined portal, which I looted the chests of, and I got this shimmering passion fruit, which had interesting effects to say the least. Spitting. Whoa. Interesting. 
interesting. I found an abandoned mine shaft, so I headed in as one normally does, and there were cave spiders at the bottom, which I absolutely hate. I looted a couple chests here and scouted the area. I found amber lying around, which could be used to make resin and ropes. Pretty cool. And I also found a skillet in one of the chests, which was, uh, it was pretty funny. After exploring around for a little bit more, I headed outside and continued my search for snow. I decided I would craft a nature's compass, which would essentially locate biomes for me and help me find snow. I set it to find a snowy beach and headed towards it. Now, you might be asking why I hadn't used this before. Well, frankly, I didn't want to use something that lets me find any biome, but uh, I also didn't want to spend days and days just looking for snow. However, upon finding it, it seemed that there was no collectible snow anywhere. Fortunately, after some searching, I was able to find a mountain peak with solid snow. I spent the next day farming it up. While doing this, I found out that you can make ice cream blocks and also snow bricks, which I plan to use in my build. These look similar to regular snow, but have a bit of added texture. I was able to collect a total of 6,000 blocks of snow and was satisfied with that. And I headed to a savanna biome next to farm up some acacia wood and also leaves because I wanted to implement those into the savanna biome design. I continued farming these trees into the following day and gathering leaves was not an easy task because a lot of them would disintegrate as I would break them. I finished farming the trees by the end of the day and finally returned home on day 765 and collected my smelted nether bricks. With that I was able to make a bunch of nether well, nether bricks, and I looked into other nether blocks that you can make, and I found out that I could make blue nether bricks, which would be very cool, but it would take too long to make them given you need blue warp blocks. I continued with preparing all of the materials I needed for the animal sanctuary, and a part of that was creating dyed glasses for it. One of the colors I needed was brown, which could be made using cattail, and additionally, it could be bone meal. So I made a little cattail farm, only to find out that the cattail I had harvested did was from the environmental mod, which couldn't be turned into brown dye. Thankfully, the cattail from the Terra Incognita mod could be turned into brown dye, and I was also able to bone meal it in a much easier way, might I add. This gave me a lot of brown dye. I had to go collect more sand because of all of the glass I was making. I smelted it right up, and this would last me for a long time. I needed to make green dye next, which would require cactus, so I wanted to make a cactus farm. At first, I planned on making this in my underground base, so I started building out a tunnel which would lead to the farm. I fully completed this tunnel and then started working on a room for the cactus farm. After trying to map this out for a little bit of time, I quickly realized that building the cactus farm underground wouldn't be the best option. So I flew out to an empty area next to my base and I started clearing the area out. There were quite a lot of trees in the area so it took me until the end of the day to chop them all down and then on the next day I began leveling out the ground. I finished digging out the heightened chunks and filled in the rest of the area. With this leveling out complete, I was ready to begin working on the cactus farm. I first had to build a 21 by 21 block outline and I chose to use pink glass for it because I thought it would look really nice with the yellowy white and green colors that the farm would have. The next step was building out a checkerboard pattern with sand, which is where the cactus would go. I then had to make holes and lines from the center point, added and open fence gates above them, and then had to create an underground section expanding to each corner of the farm. Once I had a perfect underground ground area cleared out, I started mapping out the lanes that the cactus would drop into. I had to add glass around these lanes as well to contain the items, and I placed down water for each item lane. I then worked on the item collection area, during which I noticed that you could make golden hoppers, which seemed pretty cool. Soon enough, I was done with the collection area. All I had left to do was placing fences between the sand, water, and finally the cactus, which I ran out of and I had to go to the desert to collect some. I made sure to get a lot and smelted up the extra I had for green dye. With that, the cactus farm was completed and I had collected all of the resources needed to work on the animal sanctuary. I began by working on the nether biome. I found out that I could make polished netherrack and I decided I would use it in the build. I started with creating an outline of nether bricks and then I replaced the fences every five blocks to create nether brick pillars. I built the nether brick pillars up six blocks high. Then I played around with filling in the gaps with nether brick fencing and I compared this to a design
design alternating between polished netherrack and red stained glass. I liked the second variant more, so I took down the fencing and filled in the rest of the wall with polished netherrack and red stained glass. I completed the design by wrapping it in nether brick, and the first biome segment was looking good. Before building the second layer of walling, I wanted to build the first layer of walls for every biome. The next biome I began work on was the plains. I built a layer of oak logs, leaving a space for the entrance. I then built out the pillars every five blocks. I then was trying to figure out a block to use on the inside layer, and I found out about these vertical planks. They had the exact same design as regular planks, just rotated, and I really liked their upward design. I built these up, and to fill up the gaps, used brown stained glass. This added a really nice touch to the walls and was subtle at the same time. And finally, I wrapped the top of the wall with oak logs. I then began trying to create an entryway for the sanctuary, but none of the designs really worked, so I just settled with keeping it as it was. On the next day, I began work on our savanna biome. We had a little lizard escapee while I was working on the logs, but I was able to pick it up and bring it back to its home. I got back to work on the walls, and I really, really liked the design I picked for these. However, glass panes didn't connect to the leaves. Fortunately, I was able to use full stained glass to fix this and it looked really nice. I finished off the build by adding an acacia wrap and the first layer of the savanna biome was completed. Look at what we're making, guys. Woo! Oh, <laughs> oh man. Okay. Now it was time to work on the snow biome. I compared three ice choices and liked polished packed ice the most. I ended up finding a large ice temple while flying and this turned out to be a gold mine for packed ice. I spent the rest of the day mining this up and as I was flying back home on the next day, I was trying to find the boss Frost Maw and found these smaller yetis instead. It was pretty easy to take them out and they dropped yeti fur, which didn't have any use, but the yeti antlers could be used to make bone meal. I followed through with defeating Frostmaw and I kind of felt bad after that because neither Frostmaw or the Yetis attacked me and I attacked them first. Anyways, I returned home and tried out using an outline of polished packed ice instead of snow bricks, but I did end up sticking with the snow brick outline. With that, I finished the design of the snow biome walls. I then compared white stained glass to blue stained glass, which looked fairly similar, but I preferred the white stained glass look. Now it was time to work on the final biome, the desert. This one took me a little bit of time to figure out. I used regular sandstone for the pillars, and at one point I used red arid sandstone on the sides with orange orange stained glass. I spent the next day fixing my gear because it was on the cusp of breaking and I was able to find the design I liked on day 785, which was smooth sandstone on the sides and yellow stained glass in the gaps. This inspired me to make changes to the snow biome in which I removed the polished packed ice and replaced it with regular snow. I was now done with all the walls for the first layer of the biomes and in the preparation of the second layer, I grew oak trees and chopped them down, getting way too much wood if I'm honest. I began working on the second layer for the savanna biome and I decided I would push it one block in and not include a base layer on the bottom so I carried the design right on over. After mapping out the bottom I went back through and extended the walls a total of seven blocks high. I came to a good pattern of filling in three blocks at a time and by the next day I completed the savanna biome second layer. The mix of glass and leaves had a very nice translucent look to it. I slowly filled in the plains biome in the same way and finished by the next day. I also had added a wrapping on the top of the plains biome and for the savanna as well. Repeating this pattern, I filled in the walls for the nether, desert, and snow biomes. With that, the second layer of the sanctuary was complete and all that was left was the roof. I had to spend a while thinking about how I was going to do this. I settled on making things simple, but not necessarily typical. I decided I would use full blocks indented in by one and correlate them to their correct biomes. Using the fencing that I had built on the inside, I was actually easily able to build the outline of the roof for each section. All that I had to do after that was just fill everything in and I was able to complete the nether, plains, savanna, snow, and finally desert biome. And I have to say, it looked amazing, except it was missing something on the top outer layer. I tested out placing smooth glowstone on the top and I liked it, it fit really well. I didn't have any more glowstone left though, so I headed into the nether and I mined a lot of it all the way into the next day. I got a total of nine stacks and with that, I smelted everything up in our smeltery room. Once that was done, I filled in all of the roof with smooth glowstone. I wasn't done there though. Instead of leaving torches on the roof, I wanted to create a lighting pattern with the smooth glowstone. So I went through placing it every five blocks, which took a while. And by the end of day 797,
7, everything was complete. The inside looked gorgeous as well, and I was really happy with it. On the next day, I decided that I would spend the final moments of the series making a room dedicated to all of you. I wanted it to be purple themed given my logo's purple color. I made some purple terracotta bricks and built out an exterior with them. After that, I added purple carpet to the front and shroom lights to the edges. For the flooring, I wanted to use a block that was see-through like these purple bulbous shell blocks, but I didn't have any, so I figured I'd find some in the end. I was running low on time, so I had to be quick. While on the search, I found these purple trees, which I liked, so I harvested some leaves and logs from them. And while here, I found this very strange purple slime. It was aggressive, and it attacked me, but I was able to fend it off. It just dropped some normal slime balls, though, so nothing out of the ordinary. I continued on on my search and found these pods, which had transparent purple blocks. Little Little did I know these blocks start flying up in the air when you try to mine them and the only way to get them is by attacking them. These blocks were very strange to say the least, but I decided to collect them because they would fit the aesthetic of the room very well. I also collected the wood that these pods were on top of and while I was collecting it, this happened. Oh my goodness, what is that? Look at that thing. That's freaky. That's freaky too. I know what that is though, but I don't know what this one is. That is so freaky. Oh my goodness. I don't even feel like letting this thing hit me. I just want to kill it. Oh, I killed it. Booflu. It's a booflu. Booflu vest. Interesting. Okay, I don't know. Ooh, I don't know what's going on there. Oh, these things aren't even mean. Oh, it's just so creepy. Okay, now I kind of feel bad for killing it, but like at the same time, it's really creepy. What are they doing? I don't know what's going on there. I just don't, I don't want to know. Yeah, that was freaky. I collected some more blocks that I thought would fit our theme. And once I collected all of those, I returned back home. I got right to work on the flooring, filling in our transparent blocks. You could see too much of the cave underneath though. So I placed some leaves down below. And I also found out that fire working on the transparent blocks makes you float. Anyways, I could still see the cave system with the leaves underneath. So I decided I would add an additional layer of Pythadendron planks. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a tongue twister. With that, the floor was no longer transparent, but you know what? I, I took what I was given. I used poised stems for the walls, which also had a glowing variant that worked perfectly. I used purple blocks on the corners and put purple jelly shroom cap blocks in front of them, which looked really interesting. The next day came and it was now day 800, which means I barely had any time left, but I still needed to get additional wood. So I headed into the end and was fortunately able to find it very quickly. I ended up removing the layer of leaves below the ground to make it look more transparent. And I replaced the terracotta bricks with purple blocks, which I think looks a lot better. I worked on the ceiling with the purple purple planks I had, but I needed to extend the walls up one and I had run out of purple blocks. I rushed into the end, hoping to quickly find some, which I did. And with that, I was able to finish the fourth layer of the walls. I then finished up the roof and added more glowing wood to the walls. I also needed two more purple shroom lights to light up the ceiling. So I quickly headed into the end. To my great fortune, I was quickly able to find them inside of these blue globes. So I collected them up and headed back to the purple room to to place them down. To finish things off, I crafted a purple present, grabbed the Sword of Abyss, the strongest sword in the mod pack, and wrapped the present in dedication to all of you. To finish things off, I placed some of the glowing wood as a pedestal and made a sign thanking all of you. With that, the purple room was complete. Okay. Wow. Okay, we've done it, everybody. That is the completion of the Better Minecraft series, 800 days. 801, if we're really being exact. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all so much for joining me on this journey. If you're worried that that's the end of our incredible adventures, don't worry because we're gonna go on so many more. Leave your comments down below as to your thoughts on this series and what you think I should do next. I always read your comments. Also, feel free to join my Discord community. It's linked in the description and you guys can chat with each other, leave me suggestions, and I'm often in there. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys in another video soon.